cradled within the arms of the rivers Ganges and Brahmaputra to the south, and the mysterious plateau of Tibet to the north, majestically stands the mightiest mountain range on the face of the earth, the Himalaya. This is the story of an expedition to this rugged barrier, not to assault on its windswept towering heights, but to find and study plant life, which had heretofore been unknown or inaccessible. This is the story of that mission, of how a small group of people found themselves in pursuit of a crude and primitive civilization, which once only existed as a figment of the imagination. careful study of the region, the first leg of the expedition took me to Bombay, India. Shekhar, the last settlement before entering the wilderness of rock and ice. There I selected ten Sherpa natives to serve as porters. My name is Parrish, Dr. Frank Parrish. By profession, I am a botanist working for the Cory Foundation. To record the visual log of our expedition, I engaged Peter Wells, well qualified to serve as a photographer. As our guide, I hired Subra, the only English-speaking Sherpa acquainted with the terrain. Only the most essential equipment was selected and distributed among the members of our party. All preparations completed and everything on schedule. At noon on June 14th, we set out to strike at the mountain. Supra's young wife, Tala, and his brother, Leva, accompanied us to the foot of the mountains before saying goodbye. became more rugged and difficult. Wells and I kept up with the Sherpas, who were much like human mules under the weight of our heavy supplies. We continued on to a height of 10,000 feet above sea level, where I wanted to commence my work. At last on the day, we reached the plateau region. Zubra, have your men pitch the tents. Tento hate for the Pugzu. You may show yours to go. Up to this point, having established only temporary camps, everyone was eager for our first hot meal. Camp one was now well established. 
except for a variety of common moss and crucifer flower, we found little of interest. But we decided to comb the area more thoroughly for the next few days. How about the shot? No, thanks. Excuse me, Mr. Doctor. Everything all right? Can't bother say that. Everything's fine, Super. Thank you. Alcohol good? Fine. Yeah, help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Doctor. Well, I'm no doctor. Want anything? No, oh, thank you, Super. I'll see you later. I fix nice hot supper. A wonderful tonic. Warms up the gizzards. Keep that up and you'll pickle your gizzard. Wells, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't hand out that stuff to any of the men and don't drink in their presence, understand? Okay. Suits me. Shekhar, come in. Come in, Shekhar. This is Dr. Parrish. This is Shekhar. Yes, Doctor. Let me speak to Inspector Karma, please. We'll get Inspector Karma. That night, all seemed well in the town of Shekhar. みんな来て、でもいい。タラヤンがやてにさらわれてったんだ。それで、あの、プラを一緒に行くから、みんなやってきてくれ。はい、やってきてくれよ。頼むよ。な、おい、お前らタラも本当にやってきてくれよ。や
Because of my decision, I felt that Subra resented and disliked me. What do you think is going on out there? Well, it sounds like Subra trying to be very important. I better find out. I gave no order to break camp. You move. I'll tell you when to move. We move now. Subra, what's come over you? You sent some of our men away, didn't you? Only four of our men. Other four belong Brother Leva. Concerned with our men, now come back. They look this side of the mountain. We look the other side for Yeti. I'll shoot any man who doesn't obey. <laughs> you know can shoot. Empty. Then. We're taking our cartridges. Subra, this is mutiny. Subra, take guns. All right. <laughs> Where do you intend to look for this creature? Everybody look. Rocky Valley Legion. Well, that's ridiculous. This part is not equipped for that kind of thing. Subra, no care. Well, we may as well let them go. There's no point in our following along. We might as well come back. Turn back. No can find a way. We we'll move now. Well, I think I need a drink. Yeah, you'll need more than that. Wait a minute. What about the radio? I joke, that's an idea. Get packed. We move right away. Come on. Come on. Whether Wells and I liked it or not, we had no alternative but to follow along.
minutes. Let's hope they haven't been monkeying with it. Ah, uh, looks all right. Wait a minute. It's okay, go ahead. Shekhar, come in. Come in, Shekhar. Shekhar, come in. Shekhar, come in. <laughs> Subra. Subra only want to kill radio machine. No, wait a minute. That's my personal property. Take it easy, Welch. I like alcohol. <sighs> Mr. Doctor, better go to sleep now. Big walk tomorrow. Who you are too. you? Take it easy. You too. Come on. Come on. Check our police. Oh, I hope so. Wells, have yourself a nightcap. I'll be right back. Oh, thanks, old boy. I will. I found that the radio could be repaired. Wells' case of scotch gave me an idea. Getting on your nerves. My nerves are all right. I better take a look. Last night. Subra! Subra! Oi! Come on! Subra! Subra! Oi! Mr. Doctor, believe now? The Yeti. Yeti go up there. We pack. Follow steps. Sumaga, Twizik in the Osho. Sura, 
Aren't you forgetting something? No one to mention the radio machine. It's dead. Even Subra could not fight the darkness. At sundown, he ordered the men to make camp. I still think it was a pretty mean trick, leaving my tonic behind. The tubes are all right, but the wires are broken. Oh, now you find out after depriving me of my... Wait a minute. of Subra's wife, the footprints, the death of the native. All these things began to fall into a mysterious pattern. Over. We were lucky, huh? I'll say we were. 
is beginning to get me. Uh, getting pretty high up. Probably be needing oxygen soon. Storm come. Need to find a shelter. Crow's dark. Over there. Keep. How long will it take us to get down there? One hour, maybe two. You go there, Michael. Hack, hack. Hack. Lucky thing for us we found this place. Yeah, it would have been impossible in the tents with this weather. Supra. Yes? Very good. You know, you could be a very famous man. Yes? Yeah. If we did find this Yeti and brought him back to America alive... So we'd only want to kill a Yeti. <laughs> Suppose you did kill one. How would you know it's the one you're after? If there's one Yeti, there must be a whole civilization or a whole tribe of them. So they kill all Yeti. So we don't care. How far up do you intend to go? To the top of Everest or Annapurna? Maybe yes. Where are these creatures? Why has no one ever seen one? Yeti, him hide when smell human. But Yeti come low country when want to steal woman. All of us want to steal woman. We'll go until we find Yeti. I think we go sleep now. Oh. 
Move over, Macduff. It's too bad. What's too bad? I tried to get to that radio, but it's one of the sharpest packs. Well, we'll just have to wait until we see a better opportunity. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to forget it and go to bed. No creature was not just a legend. I consoled myself with the thought that finding one would more than compensate for my failure as a botanist. Subra was a man possessed. He split the party, ordering the men to search the tunnels and to meet at the entrance of the cave. cheerful place in the world. It's only an animal of some kind. Zubra! What is it? Mountain goat. Let's go. Keep him quiet. Get a tarpaulin. We'll carry him in that. Go on. We found that the female and child of the snow creature had been killed by the cave-in. We held Subra and Leva at gunpoint and ordered them to carry the creature back to the entrance of the cave to meet the rest of the Sherpas. Subra, tell your men to put up the hands. Wells, get that gun. One false move and I'll shoot. Tell that man to put the radio down. Radio all right there. I'll try to get the Shekhar police. Unable to establish contact with Shekhar, we started down, determined to bring the creature back alive.
and I took turns watching to make certain that nothing went wrong. We managed to keep the creature in a semi-conscious state, allowing him to come to only enough to take food. So on the fifth day, we reached the low land region. On the seventh day, as we were nearing the town of Shekhar, I decided to herd the natives straight to the police. Cody Foundation, Los Angeles, California. Hi. Whom did you wish to speak with? Mr. Corey, Jr. Corey, Jr. Hi. Kochi amawashite kudasai. Hi. As I said, your foundation was granted permission to explore the Himalayas. Your discovery is of a very unusual nature, but it belongs to you, and you are free to do with it as you wish. The inspector kept repeating how friendly his country was and how it welcomed scientists, explorers, and so on. I am sure you will accept my government's apologies, and the natives will be held in custody here for taking the law into their own hands. Well, thank you. By the way, uh, can I keep the creature here until I can arrange for his uh, transportation? Of course. Of course, he'll have to be fed. And uh, could you give him an injection every six hours? Yes, we shall do that. Oh, by the way, your guide wishes to speak with you. Subra? Yes. Well, son of N. Oi, Subra, Mr. Doctor, Subra. Subra no understand law, no can say if this yeti steal my woman, nobody know. Inspector Karma, I won't prefer charges against these people. Uche kai to me in the steo. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Thank you. Oh, forget it, forget it. Mochi Hi. Hi. Your telephone call. Will you take it in the next room? Oh, fine. Come on, Bob. Hey, Yes, that's the idea. And please send the refrigerator unit as quickly as possible. Fine, fine. I'm leaving for Bombay immediately to take care of all the arrangements. You can reach me there, let's see, in care of the TWA office. Well, good. Oh, uh, would you please call my wife and tell her I'll be home soon? Good, thank you. They're sending us a refrigerator unit to transport the creature in. An air-conditioned affair. What's the matter with you? Well, I don't like the whole thing. What do you mean? Well, it's just this. I could get two or three thousand pounds for that photograph I took, and we should split that money between us. As far as the creature's concerned, well, we should sell him, and then... The photograph do what you want with it. It's for the creature. He's going to the Corey Foundation, where he belongs. You've just got no business sense. An opportunity like this comes once in a lifetime, and you don't... Did your telephone call come out all right? Oh, yes, thank you. Clear as a bell. I have to leave for Bombay right away, but I'll be back in a few days. Would you see that nobody comes near the creature, including Mr. Wells? According to this cable, your temperature control unit should be here on our cargo flight at 8.40 this evening. Now, the cable says to handle it with the utmost care. Yes, it's very delicate. We'll have to rush it to Shekhar. I've already made all the arrangements to send it and the documents to you. And we'll take care of all other formalities. Thank you very much.
follow your instructions, the injection worked fine. Here he is. Thank you. Now, let's see. Uh, this unit will keep the motor running en route. Uh, this is the temperature control and the self-contained oxygen unit. Food trap. Oh, yes, food trap. You American, manufacturing a contraption like this on a phone call. Well, I better be going. Thank you very much, Inspector Carr. Have a good trip back to California. Glad to see you. How are you? Well, instead of flowers, I brought you a yeti. That's what the natives call him. Well, where is he now? Well, he should be here. I sent him ahead on a cargo plane. Really? Yeah. Which one of you is Dr. Parrish? Well, I am. Well, hold on this pretty girl, Doctor, and give us a big smile. Thank you. I'm the chronicle, Doctor. Have you heard the story about the snowman? In just a minute. I just got here. I haven't even talked to my wife. Now, gentlemen, you can reach Dr. Parrish at the Foundation later. Dr. Frank Parrish. Dr. Frank Parrish. Please report to the Customs Warehouse. Well, which way is it? Well, it's easy enough to find out. Come on. Right. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll talk to you later. Well, there it is, darling. Mr. Corey, what do you think of it? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I see where you classify your import as a snow creature. That's right. Well, it's necessary that we clarify its immigration status. Immigration status? I don't understand. Well, the question is, is it a beast or a man? Well, he's not human, if that's what you mean. Do you know Mr. Peter Wells? Oh, yes, he's my photographer. This article came to our attention. Mr. Wells refers to your discovery as a snowman. Well, that's ridiculous. Wells is a photographer. He's reaching for sensations. This creature is definitely not human. Mr. Fleet, certainly your department isn't going to take this photographer's word literally. Well, this is a very unusual case. This is a very unusual find. Do you realize what this means to science? That's why our department was interested enough to contact a prominent anthropologist, Dr. Louis DuPont. Dr. DuPont? Of course, I've heard of him. He should be well qualified to substantiate Dr. Parrish. Unfortunately, he can't be here until 7 o'clock tonight. You will be in my office at 7 o'clock. Of course. This will have to stay in the warehouse until then. We've studied the instructions on the refrigerator to be properly connected. Well, I guess it'll just have to wait. We'll see you at 7. Come on, Doc. The department's main interest is to classify this specimen, as you call it, as not being human. Dr. Parrish. Yes, may I? Of course. I'm a little early. Well, that's all right. Dr. Parrish, Dr. DuPont. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Doctor? Has Mr. Corey been here? Not yet. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. Cigarette? Well, thank you. What an unusual find for a botanist to make. Yes, it is. And you say you also saw a female and a child? That's right. Have you seen the specimen I brought back? No, not yet. Well, we will as soon as Mr. Corey arrives. He called and he should be here any minute. 
I have said this creature is not human. I didn't say he was. I have to determine whether his brain is a calculating brain. And from that, narrow down all of the theories. We must have one definite classification. Yes, I understand. From what we know of these, shall I say, snow creatures, they have been a legend. We have seen abstract drawings and heard stories of these nomads, but they were always associated with human traits. Send it out right away. Would you come with me a moment, Doctor? Oh, certainly. Quite extraordinary, Dr. Dunbar. Car 61. Come in, Lieutenant Dunbar. Car 61. Come in, Lieutenant Dunbar. Dunbar, go ahead. The body of a girl found in the alley back of 1220 Coast Street. Repeat. In alley back of 1220 Coast Street. Over. Got it. Out. You hear that, Doctor? I better come along. I think you'd better. Oh, Mr. Fleet! When Mr. Corey gets here, brief him on everything, will you? I'll see you later. doing, Richards? I thought you were through for the day. Looked that way, didn't it? Any news from the wife? Not yet. The mother-in-law is still with her. Is something wrong? My wife and I are having a baby, that's all. Oh, is that all? This way. Oh. 
Oh, thank you, Charlie. Oh, let's see. This is the warehouse. Oh, well, here's Coast Street where the girl was killed. The distance from here to here is about, say, uh, three miles. Yeah, come on. Well, it's strange to me that nobody reported seeing him from the time he left the warehouse till he arrived at Coast Street. Well, it's late. Hardly anybody on the streets. I guess so. He's got to be stopped. Stop, Lieutenant, but not killed. Is there something else you can tell us about him, Doctor? His mentality, his habits, something? Well, he's acclimated to a high altitude, low temperature. We know all that. Send out this bulletin to all radio stations and newspapers. Tell everyone to stay off the streets and remain calm. That goes for everybody. Right. Well, what do we do now? There's nothing we can do, except wait for him to show up again. Attention all citizens, this is an urgent public service bulletin from your police department. A dangerous killer beast is at large. You are asked to remain indoors. This is an urgent public service bulletin to all citizens. A dangerous killer beast is at large. I'm sick of listening to your words. But, but please. Now you stay away from me. You... And if I never see you again, it'll be too soon. Now get out of here. But. Who's on the job? Right. He's showing up again. Where? He chased a girl near an all-night pharmacy. Let's see, he started here, then he appeared here, and now, right here, the pharmacy. He's got to be within that triangle. Instruct all units in sectors 15 and 16 to converge at area 11. Right. What's a little coffee, Doctor? Yeah. Charlie, you got any more coffee?
bed. It's getting pretty late. Okay, I'll try to check with you later. Goodbye, dear. Thanks, Lieutenant. Now, what's the matter? Now, I've got two reasons to face the floor. Yes? But that's impossible. We've got that whole area swarming with men. Are you sure? Right. What is it? What happened? This whole thing is cockeyed. These are the three areas. Logically, then, the force should be in here. But it isn't. You were just spotted at a meatpacking house way over here. Well, how did he get out of that area? Isn't it covered by the police? That's a $64 question. It's a distance of almost seven miles. And nobody's seen him from there to there. That's right. There are only two ways that this thing could get around. Walking and flying. He hasn't got wings. Any normal person could hide out at a hotel or any place. This is a white elephant. Any three-year-old child could spy him. The question is, how does he cover seven miles without being seen? Just an idea, Lieutenant, but I think I've got something. What is it? The storm drains. I don't get it. Some of those openings are big enough for two men to crawl into. You mean the catch basins? I think you've got something there, Doctor. Get me the city engineer at his home. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Edwards, that's it, Edwards. The Department of Public Works is right around the corner. So wake him up. The drainage and sewer system of the city are a lot cooler than the external temperature. I told you the creature had intuitive powers. He could have sensed the colder temperature. And that would explain why he was never seen from jump to jump. Do you have a complete chart of the storm drains? Lieutenant, there are 4,800 miles of storm drains under this city. We got lots of charts. How about the East End? Yeah. Cigarette? No, thanks. You know, Doctor, there are drains connecting these areas. We've got something to work on. Mm hmm There we are, Lieutenant. That's the area right there. There are the spots, Doctor, right along the drain lines. Can I take this with me? Yeah. Thanks, Edwards. Sorry to wake you. Well, that's all right, Lieutenant. Think nothing of it. Anything for the police department. Now, Richards, get eight men. Issue the works. It shouldn't be too much. Walkie-talkies, lamps, rubber boots, and so on. Right, Lieutenant. But first detail, we'll start here at 11th and Grand, near the warehouse. The second at Coast Street, where the girl was found. Coast. Dr. Parrish, myself, and a couple officers will start here at the pharmacy. The first detail will work to the north, the second to the south, and we'll work eastward. Time within the hour, we should all meet right here. Got it? Check. Hurry it up. All right, all right. Well, Lieutenant, can we take a net along? Sure. Hey, Richards, get a big net and some poles to go with it. Right. And, uh... Leave word where I'll be in case the hospital calls. Yes, sir. Let's go.
Yes, Lieutenant. Can you make out anything? Not yet, Lieutenant. Proceeding south according to plan. Over. How about you, Roberts? Anything happen at your end? Not yet, Lieutenant. Stay in contact.
We'll do as you say, Doctor. Yeah. I'll have Dr. DuPont give you instructions where to send the body. Come in, car 6-1. Done by. That you, Lieutenant? Yeah, we just finished the job. What is it? Very urgent call. Proceed immediately to Crescent and Elm. Urgent. Over. Who gave that order? Don't you know what time it is? I don't know, but there's a creature waiting for you. Eight pounds, three ounces. A boy, Lieutenant. Mother and son are doing fine. Congratulations, Pop. Thanks a lot, Vince. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Al. Well, I guess that's it. Good luck. I guess I better be going. I guess you had. Come on, Doctor. I'll drop you off on the way. Oh, no, no. You haven't got time. Sure I have. Come on. All right. My wife must be pretty worried by now. Say, Doctor, what's your first name? Frank. Maybe I'll name my kid Frank. Frank Dunbar. Sounds great. Thanks. I don't know. I'm not too sure I like it. careful study of the region, the first leg of the expedition took me to Bombay, India. Shekhar, the last settlement before entering the wilderness of rock and ice. There I selected ten Sherpa natives to serve as porters. My name is Parrish, Dr. Frank Parrish. By profession, I am a botanist working for the Cory Foundation. To record the visual log of our expedition, I engaged Peter Wells, well qualified to serve as a photographer. Everything's fine, Subra, thank you. Alcohol good? Fine. Yeah, help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Doctor Wells. I'm no doctor. Want anything? Oh, thank you, Subra. I'll see you later. I fix nice hot supper. A wonderful tonic. Warms up the gizzards. Keep that up and you'll pickle your gizzard. Wells, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't hand out that stuff to any of the men. And don't drink in their presence, understand? Okay. Suits me. Shekhar, come in. Come in, Shekhar. This is Dr. Parrish. This is Shekhar. Yes, Doctor. Let me speak to Inspector Karma, please. We'll get Inspector Karma. That night, all seemed well in the town of Shekhar.
cradled within the arms of the river's Ganges and Brahmaputra to the south, and the mysterious plateau of Tibet to the north, majestically stands the mightiest mountain range on the face of the earth, the Himalaya. This is the story of an expedition to this rugged barrier, not to assault on its windswept towering heights, but to find and study plant life, which had heretofore been unknown or inaccessible. This is the story of that mission, of how a small group of people found themselves in pursuit of a crude and primitive civilization, which once only existed as a figment of the imagination. terrain became more rugged and difficult. Wells and I kept up with the Sherpas, who were much like human mules under the weight of our heavy supplies. We continued on to a height of 10,000 feet above sea level, where I wanted to commence my work. At last on the day, we reached the plateau region. Zubra, have your men pitch the tents. Tento hatte kode pagzu. You may try yours to go on. Up to this point, having established only temporary camps, everyone was eager for our first hot meal. Camp one was now well established. Except for a variety of common moss and crucifer flower, we found little of interest but we decided to comb the area more thoroughly for the next few days. How about the shot? No, thanks. Excuse me, Mr. Doctor. Everything all right? Can't bother to say that. As our guide, I hired Subra, the only English-speaking Sherpa acquainted with the terrain. Only the most essential equipment was selected and distributed among the members of our party. All preparations completed and everything on schedule, at noon on June 14th, we set out to strike at the mountain. Supra's young wife, Tala, and his brother, Leva, accompanied us to the foot of the mountains before saying goodbye. Uneventful, monotonous, and tedious. 